Congratulations! You've been chosen to become an agent of the Federal Bureau of Control. But what is the Federal Bureau of Control, I hear you ask? The Federal Bureau of Control, or FBD, was formed in... Hello? Is anybody there? It's so dark, I, I can't see where I am. Please, help me! I'm the oldest house isn't your ordinary workspace, but we guarantee it's the safest place in this universe, or any for that matter. Here at the FBC, we understand changing times, and that nowadays, people want a career and a family. So, bring the little bundles of joy along to our state-of-the-art daycare, where they can enjoy educational storytelling from our in-house puppeteers. I don't know what missing in actions is, but I sure wish someone would find her. I'll help you look, Telfer. We'll find your mama together. Because here at the Federal Bureau of Control, we're all family. No, wait, please. I did what you told me to. Please, no. Sorry. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, that's right. Control is a third-person shooter released by Remedy Entertainment in the year 2019, or as we will now refer to it, the prequel to the worst year of the 21st century, so far anyway. 2019 had some standout titles, Resi 2 Remake, DMC5, Sekiro, Kingdom Hearts 3, so you'd be forgiven if you didn't give Control the time of day when it first released. I mean, the only other game Remedy is really known for is Alan Wake, and their only other major IP from the last few years was Quantum Break. Don't bother trying to remember if you played it, you probably didn't. Control kind of seemed to come out of nowhere, but I think honestly it was perfectly situated for the year it came out. Audiences were primed for cosmic horror with the release of Bloodborne, and third person shooters had kind of fallen out of favour. Heck, the only one I can think of from 2019 is The Division 2, so it's not exactly a high bar to clear. Also, side note, at this point can we just retire the Tom Clancy name? You've basically made him the Tupac of video games, but you keep putting his name on crap. Why won't you let me die? Ah, uh, who am I kidding? We all know Ubisoft is a shower of bastards. We're here to talk about Control. Now, if you haven't played any of Remedy's previous games, just know they're weird. This is probably in part because of how much they pull from the work of notorious asylum escapee David Lynch. You know, the guy who made those weird PS3 ads. Oh god, no, why? So to say their games are a little outside the ordinary is an understatement. Unlike something like Persona, which at least tries to root its narrative in a semi-realistic world with approachable characters, Control just doubles down on weirdness. Even Jesse, a character who should be our point of view character, is rather unfazed by the, oh, what's the term? Ah, here it is, batshit insane events. Jessie has the same facial expression to being told about Ossif Gossip as when she's told that the building is nearly infinite with access to multiple dimensions and has killer mold. That's great. This is the character that should be our window into the world. Her reaction should ideally reflect our own, and yet Jessie doesn't do that. She's a world-weary woman whose only goal is to find and save her brother from the shadowy cabal that kidnapped him. Everything else may be obstacles in her way, but they're obstacles she's more than happy to smash through if it brings her closer to her goal. Yet Jessie's not so jaded that she's unwilling to help people. Sure, this organization kidnapped her brother, but she realizes that the majority of FBC agents she deals with are people just trying to survive, and if they can help her get closer to her goals, she's more than willing to work with them. That's not to say Jessie approaches them all the same. She clearly has a better relationship with Emily Pope than, say, Frederick Langston, and for good reason. Philip? Oh shit, I forgot about fridge duty. You fucking suck, man! But it's not just the character's almost meh attitude to the abnormal, or the fact she talks to a voice in her head like she's a character on Dora the Explorer. Were you keeping me away? It's the game's unapologetic nature of layering on terms and ideas that seem not so much to explain what's going on, but to further their almost needless complexity. It's not even the dialogue the game constantly makes really jarring. Like this cutscene at the start of the game that's all of a sudden live action video. It's all in an effort to unnerve the player and create Control's abnormal and insane world. Once again hearkening to David Lynch and his weird views on parenting. Ah, oh, don't show the eraser baby, why? Why would you show the eraser head baby? So you would think that with all the Control 
world was to alienate, confuse, and generally disturb the player, that I would tell you it sucks and to not play it. You guys, control is just amazing. The only way I can describe it is it's like when someone tells you to mix two things that any sane person wouldn't mix, and yet they just work. Like peanut butter on hamburgers. It sounds gross, but I swear you guys, it's amazing. And control gives me the same feeling. I think Control's narrative jives with a very specific crowd, that being the kind that accidentally hears couples arguing at Best Buy and keeps listening to see what other insane crap they'll come out with next. Ugh, I can't believe I left the circus for a bastard like you. I could have been a celebrity impersonator if you hadn't ruined my life, you crazy bitch. Like it's wrong, and you definitely shouldn't do it, but a part of you wants to know how deep that rabbit hole goes. Control is much the same. I mean, one of the first things you do is purge evil from a floppy disk and gain telekinesis. When this is one of the first missions you're given, you better believe you'll be curious to see what the game pulls next. For the most part, Control succeeds in constantly keeping you guessing. Take for instance the Panopticon. Throughout the game, you've seen how dangerous the object of power can be and kind of how rare they are as well. And now we just have a vault with a bottomless pit that stores the most dangerous of these objects. But they're also wonderfully weird. Take for instance the rubber duck which is put under interrogation or a fridge that will eat people if it's not looked at. It creates this wonderful sense of mystery. You constantly want to know what the game will throw at you next. But that only has so much charm. Surely you like more than just the weirdness of control. That I do representation of the audience. For what is a game without gameplay? Now seriously, I'm, I'm asking for a friend of mine, Dan can romp and BOOM! Roasted! Up top I call Control a third person shooter. This was a misdirection. Well yes the game is in third person view and yes you shoot people. That's not all it is. Imagine if you took Jean Grey from the X-Men, gave her a gun and told her to go nuts and you have a rough idea of what Control is. The only difference is Jesse never went nuts and blew up a planet then started going around in fetish gear. Now you all have to read the Phoenix Saga to see how much of that is true. X-Men aside, Control does a great job differentiating itself from more let's say generic third person shooters. Yes you start with a pistol but the service weapon is the only gun you get. You may get mods that change the fire rate of the service weapon but they only really emulate the likes of an SMG or a sawed off shotgun. The trade off to only having one real weapon is that the gun doesn't use ammo, instead it's on a cooldown. Now, you would think this slows down gameplay, but it's actually the opposite. It forces you to constantly be on the move and to conserve ammo by making the most effective shots possible. Also, if you don't empty the clip, you don't have to wait as long in between shots as it will still charge up and you can fire it with what you already have. Once it has enough power for a shot, you can get right back to upholding justice like Judge Dredd. Now, once you're fully acquainted with the service weapon, the game decides to introduce you to the best part of this whole experience, the powers. Jesse can throw enemies and objects, dash along the ground with a glide, create a shield, mind control enemies, and my personal favorite, the power of flight. It creates a super frenetic feel in combat. Yeah, I may be out of bullets, but there's plenty of things to throw at your opponent. And when you run out of coffee mugs and desks, you can always rip concrete out of the ground and throw that. If anything, control feels less like a traditional third person shooter, where you and the enemies take turns shooting at each other, and feels more like Doom. Now, I'm not saying control is the doom of third person shooters, but it evokes the same badass feeling and visceral sense of catharsis as Doom. When played right, you just feel like a complete badass. Case in point, one of the best sequences in the game has Jesse walk down a hallway. In order to do this, you need an old Sony Walkman cassette player. I said it was a weird game. What follows is one of the most satisfying power trips I've experienced in a game as you mold down scrubs while Polish metal plays. I think it's also very telling that Control's setting of an office building is ideal for a third person shooter with its traditionally smaller rooms availing you of cover. But Control flips that on its head. Areas are much more open and spacious, both vertically and horizontally, as Jesse's power and even the service weapon are far more aggressive techniques than those found in traditional cover-based third-person shooters. But it also never makes you feel weak, unlike a lot of games with similar mechanics. Take for instance Saints Row 4, which also has superpowers. There are multiple missions where your powers are taken away and you're forced to use your guns, which are fine, but when you've spent so much time moving like the Flash and kicking people so hard they can fly, it's a bit of a letdown. Control only takes your abilities away for a narrative beat and it works so well. Because of spoilers, Jesse is briefly defeated by the Hiss. We see that Jesse is trapped in what is essentially her own hell. So what does a gun-toting, psychic badass that's best friends with an extra-dimensional being fear? In a sequence, both you and Jesse are made to feel powerless by being made ordinary. In Jesse's nightmare, it's not that she's powerless, it's that people won't even give her the time of day. She's completely alone. Just another face in the 
crowd rather than the floating pistol whipping soldier tossing badass she's used to. By taking her powers away, Jessie is completely isolated and we feel the same way because it's happening to us the player. This is Jessie's greatest fear and by extension the players. Because of this you sympathise with her way more because this isn't a situation either of you relish. And when you break out it's all the more liberating. The game constantly makes you feel powerful. I mean when a gun sounds like this you get a good idea of how much of a bamf you are. So the game doesn't need prolonged periods of time where you're without your powers, because they know how much fun they are. That's why this sequence is in such a low stakes setting, because it's more effective than having to fight a boss without your powers, which is just punishing the player for no reason. I think if you're sick of more traditional game narratives or gameplay that just seems copy pasted at this point, you might just get a kick out of how different, and in my opinion satisfying, control is. Because I genuinely feel control is an experience that as gamers you should try it least. But what do you guys think? Is there a better way to capture the feeling of working for the SCP? Or maybe you found Control too cryptic to enjoy? Let me know in the comments, like and share the video depending on whether you roll an even or odd number. Oh, and you probably noticed that we had a special guest uh, this episode. So big thank you to B Nicole Sings. You may remember her from the start of the video where she was eaten by a fridge. Anything to plug? Hi, I'm Nicole and I just want to say thank you to Kevin for having me on his channel and be part of his amazing content. If you want to find me, you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Casting Call Club all under B Nicole Song and you can email me at bnicolva at gmail.com for inquiries and business. Thank you and have a great day.